three steps for better looking videos. Using some simple lighting principles can really transform the look of your video to make them look more professional, more movie-like, and even improve the way you look on camera, especially if you've got an ugly mug like this. Let's just rewind for a minute and everything else we set up. So as you can see in this starting shot, we've got the main light set quite far away from the chair here where the subject, me, is gonna be sitting. Don't worry about that big lantern in the background. That's just to light things up for us so you can see me talking now. We're gonna turn that off for the actual shot. All right, let's level up with that first tip and that's to bring the light closer to the subject. What I'm gonna do is just grab this light and luckily it's on wheels, that really helps. And we're just gonna bring it as close as we can get to this chair here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be checking in the monitor here to make sure we don't get any of this light in the frame of the shot. So we'll just get it as close as we can. I just duck down here. You can see now we're getting this light in the shot, which we don't want. Ease it back a little bit, just double check and we'll check the angle here. Probably needs to just come around a tiny bit and we'll just drop it down just a tiny bit. That's about as close as I can get it without it appearing in the frame here. So because we've moved that light closer to the subject, it's actually gonna be brighter on the subject's face. So we either need to lower the brightness of the light or lower the exposure in the camera. Just gonna turn off this lantern and we'll grab our trusty gray card here. I absolutely love this thing. I've done a whole video on it. I'll put a link in the description. So what I'm gonna do now is just come to the camera here. I'm gonna use the Ciders Link app to make it easier to change the brightness of this lamp. So we'll just drop it till we can see the zebras on this card. Something about there should do it. So this is what it looks like with that light further away. And this is what it looks like with that light brought closer. Let's take it up a notch to level two now. And we're gonna do that by making the light source bigger. So I'm using this aperture light as the main light and I'll put links in the description to all of the other lights I use. And there's a few different ways to get the light source bigger. You could buy professional diffusion or reflection material and put that in a frame or a scrim. Or to save money, you could use something like an old white bedsheet. White shower curtains can work really well for this too. So what we're going to do is put this between the light and the subject and that's going to give us a bigger light source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two C stands and we're gonna use those to hang the sheet on. I'll just move this light out of the way so it makes some space. Having C stands with casters makes things so much easier. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this stand fairly close in here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking in the camera's monitor because we don't want the stand or the sheet to actually be seen in the shot. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'll just actually move this stand closer to the camera. I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter focal length, which is quite handy because it means we can get things closer to the side of the subject without getting in frame. If we were using a wide angle lens, we wouldn't be able to get things quite as close. Okay, we might have to tweak that once we get the sheet up. And we'll do the same thing here. Just get it out of frame. And then I'm just using these little plastic clips to get it in place. An alternative version of this is to actually hang the sheet up, shoot the light into it and reflect the light or bounce the light back onto the subject. All right, so we'll start off at this end. Let's fold that over and clip it on. Grab another clip here, another clip here. So you can see we can, hello, we can see the uh, sheet here. So I just need to move this stand a bit out of the way. And the idea is to get this as close to the subject as possible. So I'm gonna bring this side around just see what we can get away with. It's doing things like this on your own when it really helps to have a bigger monitor, which I don't have at the minute. Another way you can do this is just to use your hands because you can usually see your hands. And if you see your hands disappear out of the frame without touching the thing, it means you're probably good to go. Now we've got that sheet set up, just gonna position this light. And to do that, I'm gonna turn off this lantern. So apologies if you see a bit of noise in this image if I've boosted it in post. We're just gonna position this, maybe drop it down a bit. And all we're trying to do here is get the light to light up a bigger surface area here. Just tweak that a little bit. What I'm also going to do is just use this just to block off some of the light hitting that back wall. Because what I don't want is more reflections on that back wall. Because we've basically added another layer of diffusion that this light is traveling through, it's gonna mean that the light hitting the subject is now gonna be darker, which means we either have to increase the brightness of the light or increase the exposure in the camera. So what I'm gonna do, bring back our trusty gray disc, and I'm just gonna increase the exposure of that light till we get the zebras on here. I'm maxed out now for the output of this light. and We still can't get the right exposure. So what I need to do now is I can either use a lens with a wider aperture or increase the ISO. So let's just go and increase the ISO. And as I'm doing that, 
just checking out the zebras on the display here. So this is what it looked like with the smaller light source. And this is what the shot looks like with that bigger light source. Let's take things to level three now and get negative. Negative fill or neg is where we take light away from certain parts of the image. All you need to do this is some black material, some black phone board or some black cardboard, for example, and then just position it opposite the light to increase the amount of shadows on this side. Just gonna use this material and I'm gonna grab this contraption here. This is just a C stand that I've put two arms on. And what I'm gonna do is we wanna position this close to this side of the subject, so the opposite side to the light. You don't wanna actually see it in the frame. So I'm just gonna unfold this, and then we'll just hang it up here. I've actually got two pieces of this. So you can experiment with different sizes of negative fill and also distance from the subject just to get different looks. And if you've got any gaps, you can always use another clip just to bring the pieces together. Next thing to do is position this so it's not in the shot. Because I'm using the 50 millimeter lens, I can get this fairly close, especially closer to the camera. I'm just looking in the camera's viewfinder there, just seeing how close we can bring that. And also gonna do the same for this back end. So even though we've added this negative fill on this side, we don't have to modify the exposure from the main light if we don't want to, because it's still gonna be lighting up that lit side of the face with the correct exposure. So this is what the shot looked like with no negative fill. And this is what it looks like with that negative fill added. In this shot, you should notice that this side of the face is a bit darker. And some of these areas around here, and maybe under here, have a bit more shadow than the previous version. Making better so looking better sounding and better edited video is what this channel is all about. If that's useful to you, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And for more tips on making better looking videos, check out this playlist next and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.